I was hyped about Invincible from the very first trailer. I had never read Robert Kirkman's comics, but the trailer hooked me instantly. It did so by showing glimpses of interesting characters and a bit of gore that made it clear this show wouldn't be like other animated shows. This one would be for adults. Invincible deconstructs superhero tropes like Amazon's other superhero property, The Boys. It follows Mark Grayson, son of Nolan Grayson aka Omni-Man, the world's strongest superhero. Nolan's got super strength, super speed, super endurance. He's Superman without the laser vision. Mark inherits his father's powers and becomes a hero while maintaining his high school life. It's a coming of age story that doesn't flinch away from the brutal gore that would result in a world with super heroes. They're an established part of the society in Invincible, alongside the super villains that come with the terrain. What makes Invincible special, however, is how it's framed and how it utilizes its medium. So today, on Tears and Rain, we're going to look at how animation enhanced it. Firstly, the animation helps with Invincible's tone. Invincible is similar to The Boys, but with one crucial tonal difference. Invincible is a show about hope. In The Boys, everybody sucks. Most established heroes are douchebags at best. Even the titular vigilantes, the boys, are only great by comparison. They're doing terrible things for the right reasons, instead of just because. In Invincible, there is a corrupt hero. Nolan is a Viltramite, an alien race who seeks out worlds weaker than theirs and conquers them to grow the Viltramite Empire. The first episode of Invincible closes with Nolan beginning his conquest as he slaughters the Guardians of the Globe, a Justice League parallel for Invincible. As the show progresses, we watch Nolan grow more tightly wound until he launches an assault that ended with him fighting Mark, but we'll get to that. The other heroes all fight for the right reasons. They believe in something. Mark doesn't know Nolan's past and looks up to him as one of the greatest living heroes and an ideal that Mark wants to live up to. The teen team that Mark encounters helps found the new Guardians of the Globe while Adam Eve tries to find a way to use her powers without fighting. I can irrigate deserts, stop natural disasters, bring food to the starving you know, make a real difference. This isn't to say that all the heroes are paragons of good. Rexplode, one of the new guardians, is a cocky, arrogant, cheating ass. Their new leader, Robot, breaks a pair of super criminals out of a high security prison for his own ends. Despite having very human failings, they try to do good for the sake of doing good. Unlike the boys, Invincible is full of optimism. The animation only enhances this. The bright color palette radiates that hopeful joy in a way live action couldn't compare to. It also captures the imagery of a comic. The spandex suit still looks so out of place in animation. Robert Kirkman's original imagery shines in vibrant colors without losing any of the source's brutal fights. One of animation's strengths lies in how it captures motion. Animation can create anything it can draw, so anything. This allows animation to capture fights that would otherwise be too expensive, especially for TV. Invincible's fight scenes are one of its greatest strengths. Invincible doesn't shy away from showing the fallout of superheroic fights. Nolan's battle with the Guardians is far from pretty, and his later defeat of Mark was the most brutal battle of all. These fights contrast with the previously established hopefulness. It shows what the heroes are fighting for and what they need to struggle against. Sometimes being a hero looks easy. There's a sequence in one episode where Mark chats with his girlfriend Amber while various criminals try and fail to beat him up. Other times it's hard. One of the most emotional parts of the show was after an alien invasion. Mark did everything he could to save an elderly woman who was in the wrong place at the wrong time. He failed. What hospital did they move Maya to? No, they, they said she'd recover. It was a sobering reminder that being a hero takes effort and that heroes can't save everyone. Invincible doesn't sugarcoat that. 
It doesn't peel back the scale of the destruction, so you only see buildings crumble. The animation helps because it gives the fights the scale they deserve. A television show's special effects budget can only go so far. Effects aren't everything, of course. I'd rather watch a great story with mediocre effects than a mediocre story that looks pretty, but animation helps Invincible get both. Animation is a complex process, but ultimately makes it far easier to show epic battles on the budgets imposed by television. There are numerous great fights. Several come to mind, but the standout is, of course, that final brawl. When Nolan fought Mark, it was the culmination of everything the show had built up to. While the audience has been aware of Nolan's traitorous nature throughout the entire story, this is the first time Mark found out. It wasn't a quiet fight either. The battle involved Nolan throwing Mark through buildings and a subway to show how weak humans were. How easily they and their world fell apart before a Viltrumite's full strength. It was the ultimate expression of what animation could do for the story as well. The fight took place over miles, and we were able to see every blow. We were able to feel the impact of each and every strike as father and son fought. Animation captured the emotional and physical impact of the final showdown in a way live-action television never could. For this fight to take place in live-action, Episode 8's budget would have to have been massively inflated, likely at the cost of effects and other episodes. Animation delivered the kind of battle you only see in high-budget blockbusters produced by Marvel and DC. 2021 has given us plenty of superhero shows, but Invincible is one of the best. It's not just a deconstruction of superhero tropes. Invincible is unique because it's animated. When it comes to American animation, it's often treated as a genre rather than a medium. There are so few animation productions from America that aren't adult comedies or children's stories. It's a shame. Treating animation as a genre, packing it into those little boxes, robs the medium of so much potential. Invincible rejects this. It's an hour-long animated show aimed at adults. Moreover, it isn't animated for fun. The animation truly enhances the storytelling and the impact of the plot and characters. Hopefully, Invincible is the first step towards treating animation as what it is, a powerful medium that doesn't need to be confined to two small boxes. It can be anything if it's only given a chance. Yes.